Hello and welcome to a BAM Studios LEGO Lord of the Ring review of The Orc Forge. I'm reviewing this in my new format for because I've reached a thousand views. Um, and I'm going to be reviewing this as up. I'm going to be re reviewing basically all of the Lord of the Ring sets apart from the very recent Minds of Mario ones. So I'm going to re review your kind of attack. And I might keep Gandalf so right the way it is, that's just really, that depends. Anyway, I'm also going to, um, hopefully, me and my friends have figured out that between us, we can review every single LEGO Lord of the Rings set for a first wave. And seeing as this is um, now going to be a mainly LOTR and Hobbit themed channel and only reviewing other things if we happen to get them for birthday or Christmas or whatever um, I would like to thank all of these people Bryn, that's me obviously and then um, and, and then because these are effectively BAM Studios um, yeah it's quite cocky isn't it naming it after my initials but you know anyway um, so I'm going to be reviewing the Orc Forge, which is what I got yesterday for Christmas. Um, and let's have a look at the features. So first we are going to look at the smaller stuff, because we get a lot of loose stuff that can be put on lerts if you want to, a lot of lerts as armour. So um, this is the loose stuff we get we get white hand of saruman helmet white hand of saruman shield um and then on the anvil we get regular armor and then that the um orc can forge onto the anvil um, we also get this sword mould, which I'll show you how it works later. Um, if we just... Da -da. <laughs> da -da -da -da. And then obviously, um, the minifigures, what I've got front here is we have this orc with hair and finger. This is Mordor orc, and it does have a back, and it's not like a double-sided face, it's just you can't see the back of its head. Whereas the other orcs, you can see it because he doesn't have any hair. And then this is a white hand of Saruman Yorokai. And this is actually pretty cool because this is like, to get one of these figures is about 10 quid on 5 star toys or something. And so it's quite nice to have them. And plus, you've got enough armour to stick them on a regular Yorokai as well, or on Lurts, obviously. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you Lurts um, and his birthing pit. So here, um, now this is quite a horrible scene really in the actual um lord of the rings films but um show you here saruman should really come with this set but i'm not going to moan about that because you know it's like lord of the rings and plus i think we may be getting saruman in one of the summer wave sets um and here inside here is alert and the, it's an open back actually so you can just push them out the back and you get well it's because he's, he's the leader of the york and he's the first one to be born he does have, um, he has a brown face with the, um, war markings on as well, for Yorokai. And you can put all the white hand of Saruman armor on him if you want, but that takes a while, so. And there's no point showing you that, because you know what it'll look like, really. And then, he obviously has the Yorokai hair, and he does have back printing. does have back printing. Um... Now, um, the orcs have back printing as well, and um, it's similar to the back printing of the Mario orcs, really, but just ever so slightly different. Um, and you can put this bit back up, even once this rocks here, you can shove another your kai in, say you're in a stop motion or something, and you've just pulled one out, you can shove another one in the back to pull another one out. Anyway, um, now we are going to look at the function with... Uh, the main thing in it, which is obviously the forging of the weapons. So if I just get everything. There. So 
So you can just have, um, see this other figure here, the orc, with back printing at, on the head. It's a bit blurry today. Like I said, I'm going to try and get things like that sorted out when I, you know, as the transition goes on to Bam Studios, which I may change the name, although this is going to be my official name. I don't know if I'm going to change it because, I mean, I'm going to change the name on my Google Plus channel and stuff like that, but you know. Um, anyway, say he's just digging around and he finds all of these little bits of different minerals and stuff. So he chucks them to here. This is meant to come with six, but I don't know if I've lost one or something, but I don't know. Oh, it seems like I've lost one already. Right, and now you can hook. I'm just do this. You can hook this one onto onto here, which is difficult, admittedly. And then you can start to pull it up with a winch, which if I show you. Uh, da -da -da. Also turns around this when you do it. So you're bringing it up and this thing's spinning. Now on the back, that's just a simple turning mechanism. If I just. Ta da! <laughs> and then. Right. I just sort this camera back out now. Uh, da -da -da. And then you see you can unhook that and whichever rock or whatever happens to be up here, you can then take it and then you can, you know, sort through it. And if he finds the good and when he finds the good stuff, you know, like the silver and all that, he can put it down this chute. Um so obviously it goes down this bit and into there. Um and if I Show you now if I get it is in there in the pot, and so obviously now you can transfer this over into this cooker, and of course, the sort of reddish glow thing that comes from the light because normally it's one that emits a normal sized light, but it's covered in red see-through casing and red see-through bricks are next to it so I think it's deliberately so you get more of a red effect. Now obviously you can sort of see it through there, I mean if you press down hard enough it comes less but you can still see it um, and you can see it going across the table from where I am and stuff but you know um, it's quite a good feature, I'll show you a bit more in the dark once I'm done with this but then basically you got all the melted down minerals and you pour them into the moulds for the swords and then you can get two new Yorika, two newly moulded Yorokai swords. Because that is basically that is the main playability function of this, and it is actually quite a, a thingy. Because you see those moulds there, you can just pour the silver bits into there, and then you know once you're done, you just you can just do it all over again if you really want to. You know, if I just stick that back down there, right? Yeah, so it is good now. As for the lights function, I don't know if you can see it more now that there's not the thing on it. That's what I mean about the crackle on the middle as well. <clears throat> right, if I get a I'm going to turn off the lights. See, it's very dark. You can only just see it, probably. And, see? So it's actually quite bright. If I just turn... There's a lot of loose parts on this. So when you do turn it over, you have to be careful, but... Look. See? And that is actually quite good, so I'm just going to turn the lights back on. Walked into a chair there on my way back to turn the lights back on. Um, anyway, uh, yes, that's the problems with having it completely dark, but obviously you don't have to. You can 
still see it. I mean, it looks brighter um, to my eyes when it does on the screen. And I'm not just saying that. <laughs> and, okay. I hope you have enjoyed this review because obviously there's not that much more that I can talk about and say. It's actually a really fun build. I was doing um, the Hobbit sets as well, even more so. But I was doing this review build for a Lego Star Wars one. Um, and it was just the build, it was so repetitive, it was really, really boring. It was just like, like when I was doing um, Bag End, um, which I've got, yes. <laughs> and when I was doing um, the other, the 10 quid one, Riddles for the Ring, um, it was much more interesting builds, uh, particularly in Bag End, because obviously that one, it drones on for quite a while, so you ha it has to be an interesting build. And they really pull that off, it's just... And this is quite a good one as well, maybe not quite so, it's just the Star Wars ones are less, I don't know, I don't know, it just sort of adds to the experience for with the set, if it's fun to build, but you know, anyway, so I'm hopefully going to re-review um, <laughs> your Attack soon, and um, maybe re-review Gandalf Arrives, I genuinely haven't decided yet, and I'm definitely going to get my friend James to review some of his sets, obviously, um, and Joe and that, and I want to make sure everybody's contributing, um, although Andrew won't, Andrew's already done a review for it, James will be doing the, um, Shelob's attacks and Battle of Hounds Deep, um, and I don't think Joe will be doing one for this, but, you know, he may end up doing a Hobbit one, I'm definitely going to try and persuade Andrew to do a review of a Warlock Attack, but whether he actually will get round to it or not. Of course, when I asked about Lord of the Ring reviews last time, he was the first one to do it, so I think he's probably better than like Joe and James and that, because James is busy. Um, anyway, uh, that is the end of my review. So, um, basically... <sighs> Just see, I haven't actually shown you the new format that much, but if I just move all this out the way, you can see at the bottom it has Lego Lord of Rings review, it has a picture of Edoras, it has BAM Studios, and slightly higher than that. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, it has Bryn Mitchell, Andrew Long, Joseph Drake, and James Colville. And that is BAM Studios, and I would like to say um, goodbye from all of us here at BAM Studios.